This is the You, Me, and BTC podcast. Cryptocurrency decrypted. Welcome to episode 61. This week, we're chatting about a crazy new crypto service called Slur. It's still in development, but when it's done, it's supposed to allow people to anonymously auction off secret information for Bitcoin. It's been dubbed WikiLeaks 2.0, and the secrets likely to be found on the market include proprietary source code, customer databases, military intelligence, and more. Theoretically, anyone wishing to suppress a secret will be forced to bid against the general public in order to do so. Today, we'll share our thoughts on the service and try our best to guess its mind-boggling implications. Your hosts are Tim Baker, John Stewart, and myself, Daniel Brown. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to yet another episode of the world famous You, Me, and BTC podcast. Now we're world famous. We are, it's it's true. I, I know somebody in every country who knows about us, so thanks for joining us. This is episode 61. If anybody cares, we are recording on yet another late Monday night. This is Monday, February 23rd, 2015. I am Daniel Brown, and I'm here with Tim Baker and John Stewart. So we got a little bit to talk about today. This is a service called Slur, S-U-L-R. I found this a while ago. I could have sworn it was Tim that sent it to me, but he says it wasn't. So I, I say really... I don't. I say I don't remember. <laughs> well, somebody did, <laughs> and it, I don't know. It just looks pretty. Interesting. On it, honestly, it's kind of something right up our alley. We get into these moral questions. I feel like about you know what's <laughs> what's okay and what's not okay to do. What should the government do? What can the people do? And all this weird stuff, which I feel like we're going to get into a lot of that today. But we'll see where this takes us. Tim, do you want to tell us what slur is? Well, slur, as far as I understand, is a Unless I did find this before Daniel introduced <laughs> this to me, he kind of just brought up, he's like, don't you remember sending this to me? I was like, no, it's cool finding out about it again. <laughs> Introducing Slur, you're going to hate it. So that's, I mean, I already <laughs> yeah. kind of like this company's attitude a little bit. But <laughs> That's the, yeah, that's their headline right on top. That's all, like when you load the page, that's the only words you can read is Slur. You're going to hate it. <laughs> well, real, real quick, what is, do you know what that picture is? Is that like Zeus or something? Or or maybe uh, what's the god of the sea guy Neptune kind of looks like? Or Poseidon? I don't, I don't know. know. It looks like a a statue of a Greek god is is pretty much what it looks like. Yeah. Or, but he's holding like there's a different. It looks like a head. I don't know. I can't really tell though. Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit weird. But maybe it'll mention it. Maybe they'll make some kind of weird connection to Greek mythology. I don't know. But anyway, as far as their page says. Slur is an open source, decentralized, and anonymous marketplace for the selling of secret information in exchange for Bitcoin. Slur is written in C and operates over the Tor network with Bitcoin transactions through Libitcoin. Both buyers and sellers are fully anonymous and there are no restrictions on the data that is auctioned. There is no charge to buy or sell on the Slur marketplace except in the case of a dispute where a token sum is paid to volunteers. So, yeah. So it's it, it kind of seems like... An open marketplace for secrets, I guess. I, yeah, that that seems like the core of it. So, what what, what do you guys think? Is that something? Do you think a lot of people are going to do that? What kind of secrets do you think would go around a place like this? I mean, well, when I first started reading this, like when I read that first paragraph, I was kind of, I don't know, maybe just in, I was in the mood today to argue about something <laughs> play devil's advocate <laughs> yeah but i mean when i was just when i was first reading that i was kind of like i don't really understand the point of it like why would people do this 
I don't know, I guess I'll- but I'll spoil it now by saying that as I read- I've read pretty much the whole page now, like, the more I read, the more I like it. <laughs> yeah, I- I guess we'll- I- I have some thoughts on what might be popular secret information to sell, well, but- there, there's a thing they right have there a huge, says, how does it work? They have a huge list of types of information that they expect to see down at the bottom. Okay. It's like a huge list. There's probably like 20 things, maybe 15 or 20. Well, I, I just saw the one thing and that kind of opened up is the trade secrets, which is cool because, I mean, P, uh, you can make the argument, like I think a lot of people make the argument that like, uh, like corporate secrets, that's an interesting thing to get into as far as like the moral implications of that. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just very... It's it's weird thinking of... See, this is one of those things where... I mean, maybe I'm getting a little bit too much... Like, fangirling over this a little bit too much. <laughs> but it seems like this is one of those things where it's like, why didn't... Why wasn't this already here? Like, it kind of just seems like something that should have come up earlier. And I think it has. It had well, to have. Yeah. That, that's well, what I would say is obviously people have been buying and selling information for forever. But matching it's with just, Bitcoin and the internet, it's beautiful. <laughs> well, yeah, they called this WikiLeaks 2.0. Yeah, yeah. I think it's that like, yeah, this time we're not even going to be sharing it to be nice. We're just going to sell all your secrets for profit. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they say something about that too, about with psychopaths and stuff. But I guess just to, to get on with what you were just saying about how it seems like there would have had to be something for this already. I guess when I was trying to not like this at the beginning that was kind of what i was thinking like i'm pretty sure the people who want to sell this kind of crap have already figured out ways to do it and they're people who don't need something like this but then yeah as i was reading more and more of it it makes more and more sense as to why they this is a yeah potentially well, let, could be let's, good let's uh explain that then well uh, john you want to read like a little bit of the how it works section and explain why why this is better than what people might have already been doing yeah so sellers encrypt upload and then list their data on the digital market with with the easy user might list an item on ebay they do so with full anonymity and there are no restrictions on the content of the data Exclusive bidders attempt to purchase the data for their own use and or prevent parties from acquiring a copy, which that's really important. We'll have to talk about that. Yeah, uh, definitely. In a bit. <laughs> Should an exclusive bidder win the auction, they alone will receive the decryption keys. The same data cannot be auctioned a second time on the slur marketplace. That's probably worth talking about, too. We'll have to come back to that because uh, I have some questions, I guess. Yeah, so do I. But yeah, we'll finish this list real quick. <laughs> yeah. Crowd bidders pull their funds into a single bid. Should they win the auction, the network will release the decryption keys to all users in the slur marketplace, and the information will therefore become public. That could also be something to talk about. Arbitrators <laughs> are randomly selected users who agree to weigh in on a dispute should the winner of an auction claim that the decrypted contents do not match the seller's description. Public key cryptography ensures the data being sold can only be decrypted by the winner of the auction. So uh, I would start, like you said, back up a little bit. The idea of bidding on, a, on data in order to prevent other parties from acquiring a copy, that seems really cool. I mean, when somebody has a secret, why would they sell it to anybody other than the highest bidder? Especially when everybody's anonymous, so it's it's not like you can pick which one you like better. It's just somebody out there. And so if that data really is worth keeping secret, somebody's going to be willing to pay for that. And that, that, that kind of levels the playing field, I guess, because, I mean, one of the first arguments people could bring up here is, well, like, wait, hey... We don't, they're secrets for a reason. It, there are some things that everybody isn't supposed to know or, or, or that not, it depends who's saying they should or shouldn't know things, but people could argue that having secrets is, is a good thing in certain situations and that's fine. And, and the idea is with this system that that can happen because if it's really worth keeping secret, then somebody's going to bid high enough to, to let it stay a secret. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, another thing that I think, I don't know, I was thinking about this particular section of it. I guess typically with these kind of things, well, I don't know. I guess a lot of people who do this kind of stuff actually want it to get out. Either that or like with with the second part, you you could pretty much call that blackmailing. So I'm not really sure how I feel about that. You mean blackmailing? Yeah, the thing about basically, it's like if you work for a company or something and you like put up, maybe you're like an accountant and you put up their books on there or something so that they, I don't know, if they have like well, shady books or something, then they're paying you to so that it doesn't get out there. I mean, that's essentially just blackmailing. Okay. All if right, you're putting no, something that's... up with the intention to get the person who owns it in the first place to pay for it, to pay so that it doesn't get out. Yep. Yeah, I can see that. And that, uh, you're right. I mean, I, that does seem like it could lead to problems because it, it incentivizes, yeah, pretty much that perfect scenario. It would incentivize, but see, I don't know. It doesn't really incentivize it any more than it's just already a thing where if I have bad information and somebody doesn't want it to get out, does this, does this change that aspect of it? Do, like, does it really make blackmail easier or more common? Or is that just something that might happen in this like it would anywhere else? I don't, I don't I, think so. That was, I like think, we, it, well, you can finish. Well, I'm going to have a little bit of a tangent here. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just going to say, I think it does make it easier just as much as Bitcoin makes it easier to do anything that you could already do with dollars. Okay. So I'm not like, I mean, yeah. I mean, you could basically pretty much make a straight analogy there. Yeah. Like people are going to be blackmailing whether this thing is here or not, but it still does make it easier. Just like people are going to okay. use like dollars to do, to like pay for child pornography or something, just as much as Bitcoin's going to make that easier. They're still going to do it whether it's there or not. Yeah, no, I can see that. It's like it's like any innovation. Yeah, makes things easier to do good or to do bad. So, well, I mean, do you guys care if I go on a little bit of a tangent? Yeah, go for it. Depends on how stupid it is. <laughs> no, it shouldn't be that bad. It's not going to be that bad. <laughs> I was kidding. It it does make it easier, and this is how this is how um not selfish um what's the word I'm looking for hypocritical. I'm I'm very hypocritical because. Hearing this kind of thing makes me go, ooh, this sounds fun. Which, actually, thinking about it now, I'm not even sure how much I really like it. Because this ties in a lot to, uh, like, John brought up about the blackmail, which I wasn't thinking about. is exactly what that, that Ross Ulbrich allegedly tried to have someone killed over. And then I was like, oh, I don't like snitches and everything like that. So that's interesting that I switched that quickly. But... <laughs> Speaking on what John was saying about it being, it, it does definitely make it easier, just like anything that Bitcoin makes it easier. That doesn't mean it'll make it more prevalent, because I also remember when we were doing the article on Ross Ulbricht and the whole thing with the Dread Pirate Roberts being convicted, I looked at another article that was linked in the article that we were looking at, and it started talking about how it, they had one of the um, the heroin dealers come on, come in and testify. And it seemed like the prosecution was really playing up the fact that he wouldn't have normally been able to do this. He wouldn't have norm like he wasn't the kind of person that would normally be selling heroin or about how like he, he sent heroin to places where it normally is and it made it so easy. But I, I still don't think it's going to happen necessarily more than like with this or with the, the Silk Road, with anything like that. Like it, it makes it easier because it's it's more convenient, it's it's faster, it's or if it's like this, it's a marketplace. Instead of doing this through email where they've always done it before, they're selling trade se secrets on a, a marketplace. And I don't think it's going to happen more. I just think it's going to be easier. It's I mean it's going to happen anyway. I don't know how much I agree with it, but yeah, I get where you're coming from, and I definitely think there's a lot of like gray area with this. That the I feel too. Is gray area. <laughs> yeah, but but um, just about the thing about it becoming more prevalent, I actually m might 
worry about that a little bit with something like this versus the Silk Road. Like I said, when I was first thinking of this, it seemed to me like anyone who would do something like this would already be doing it and already have ways to do it. But then when I read some of the exam, like down at the bottom, they give examples of the types of things they expect to see up on here. And it was a lot of things that were like way more mundane than I was thinking when I first read it. Because when I first read it, I'm thinking stuff like the Silk Road and like Snowden or whatever. But like when you go down, it's it's just like, like I said, like it could be some company's books or something like that. Or like people who work for Microsoft giving out source code for the OS or whatever for things that aren't open source, which that's another thing I'd want to talk about later. But um, I think that... I'd be more worried about this becoming more prevalent because with things like that, I think most people aren't really that loyal to their companies. Yeah. I think because I think there's a difference between things like, like drug dealing and stuff where they still, there's still like a pretty strong social stigma against it. Like most people still think of that as a pretty bad thing or like they think of that as rock bottom or something. Yeah. But I don't think people have the same kind of idea towards, like, screwing your boss. Oh, yeah. Yeah, people are always like, yeah, just, or just gossip in general. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think people take information less seriously than they do other things. So I might be, I think I'd agree with you that it, I don't think, like, every single person is just going to go out and start doing this, but it, I could see it becoming a problem. To be honest, though, I, I might push back against, against both of you and I'll start in a general way he's gonna push back he's rebelling John <laughs> we have to put him down now just the idea of having any kind of free market which this is I mean obviously you'll have to look at specific cases and see how it plays out but in a general way I have a hard time seeing how an anonymous free market can be a bad thing because you're right, bad things could happen, but the whole point of the free market is, like, people will put up money to prevent the bad things, or something like that. And then to to bring it down to something more specific, if we take your blackmail example, I'm not entirely sure how that is a bad thing, because if somebody's cooking the books, wouldn't it be a good thing to get that information out? And... That makes the employee, he is incentivized to to sell that information because it's, you know, people will want to know and see but that see, stuff. But see, that's, that's the difference between blackmail and, like, what Snowden did. He's not trying to get the information out. He just wants money. Right, but if it's, if it's, if it's worth money, then it's probably worth getting out. Like, yeah, like yeah, people are willing but, to... But in most cases, the businesses are going to have enough money to prevent that. Like, businesses that are going to have problems with this kind right, of thing. Right, but that's, see, that's where I think the free market comes in. Because maybe that's true, but, but if it really is something that needs to come out, I think the free market will say, hey, here's a bunch of money, let it come out, the business will be screwed. Or, or, or well, even It depends then, on what is being offered. Like, if it's, if it's something like, oh, well... Uh, McDonald's doesn't use all beef. I, mean, <laughs> well, it, it, I don't even know if they do or not. It doesn't really matter. No one cares. But well, it's exactly. something like that's the thing. If nobody cares, then then nothing yeah. really happens. If people do that care, kind of takes away a lot of the stuff that could be sold. That that's that's the whole point of the free market is that it it decides what matters and what doesn't I matter. Think, and I think like yeah, I I think I agree with you. I guess maybe this gets back to something we talked about maybe last episode or the one before, I can't remember which one, about how just because you can do something doesn't mean it's a good thing to do or a good idea to do it. Right. Well, yeah. But but, but even that, sorry, it, it, it's nothing new. I, I would just still say that it's the free market. If, it, if it's a good thing, then people will pay for it. If not, then they won't. Well, yeah, it's like, I don't have a problem with them making this site i'm just i guess it's just like things that i could see being a problem with it or things that i wouldn't like to see done yeah. in that way yeah. being done on it yeah i kind of like this i think because 
my initial reaction is that I don't like it and I don't want people to be able to do it, but then this is just the internet again going, okay, I mean, I mean, it doesn't matter that I hate it and it doesn't, none of this matters that I'm bothered by it. And that's, I don't know if that even makes sense, but that's kind of why I like it. No, that, I think that is a good thing. You know, in some cases, yeah, exactly what you said. When people are just like, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad, but, but if they get to choose what, if they're able to do it, if they think it's good, then I think we should, we should be glad that there are opportunities for people to do what they think is good. I don't know that this is, I think, but it's not about being good. It's about getting paid. That's yeah. Like, I'm I'm just so confused. Are you reading about the part thing? of the bottom, Daniel or John, about the? It's estimated that five percent of the general population. Yeah, yeah. Like that okay. I like that because there's this part that says it is. Es- and this is why I like it. That and because it just introduces uh, kind of just it just smashes into everyone else like trying to keep stuff down. It just goes well. No, if you want to sell it, we'll take it. And I kind of just like that, but. It is estimated that 5% of the general population are psychopaths. Introducing financial incentive in an anonymous framework will produce a greater yield of leaked information than, say, from the ideology that drove patriots like Edward Snowden. For every idealist willing to selflessly sacrifice their freedom, assets, and even risk their lives for the greater good, there are a thousand psychopaths willing to anonymously sell out their peers for material gain. So yeah. that, that's, I think that's the part that John, like, and I understand it, like, that's kind of like the bad part. But then I like it because of the next paragraph of organizations of every type, governments, corporations, and the military are in the unfortunate, everything, all things that I hate, I hate all of them, are in the unfortunate predicament of having both a great deal of liquid assets and a large number of secrets to protect, accessible by numerous disgruntled or psychopathic personnel. <laughs> The people who go work these places are the ones who are going to sell everyone out the first chance they get. When slur becomes ubiquitous, it will bleed organizations' secrets and funds. So, you have the, like, if a company, one, you can sell all their secrets, or two, they can go, oh, we need to buy all this stuff, and you just start taking money away from the military and away from corporations, away from yes, government. Yes, that's, that's great. Yes. That, and that's but the same thing it, as... I'm like frothing at the mouth right yeah, now. And, and, <laughs> and you're, pounding, you're pounding on your microphone, too, to make your point. I was. Sorry. I think I, think I had, like, the same reaction when I read this part, too, though. That's, <laughs> why, I thought that, that's yes. why I thought that was so funny. I, I don't know. It's like this thing will, like, just reading this page, you go back and forth between emotions so much. You're, like, the, you're like, what kind of like insane idiot thinks this is a good idea and then you're like holy crap this is amazing and then <laughs> this it's just, is a great it's idea like, well to be to be completely honest that's that's what i was trying to get at with the blackmail thing is like even if they do buy it they're going to take a hit that like if if you're if you're dumb enough to cook the books you're going to have to pay a lot of money to to keep that secret and sure i mean maybe you'll succeed maybe you'll have that much money but you'll take a hit and somebody who has your secrets is going to get paid and yeah and and i still also that person you know your employee your accountant he what's his other option to just keep working for you and not tell anyone yeah for not making any money it doesn't even have to be it's just introducing the idea that you can get paid in this kind of because it says again, I'll read another part. As damaging as slur can be to individuals, it is considerably more so for groups. And these kind of groups thrive completely on secrets and keeping everyone in line with that. Whether it's punishment or it's it's you pay them something, but then you introduce this thing where they can get anonymously paid online, and there's not really any reason not to. I mean, it just it. Besides it actually, like, physically bleeding them dry, it, it's a mental, I think, just game changer for people in general. Well, yeah, that's, you're right. You're not going to want to cook the books if you're going to have to pay for it. You're going to oh, be I'm worried about like all that, that stuff. And, 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 and with, you know, with the government examples or whatever, you're not going to want to do stupid stuff in a group if you're going to have to pay for it in the end. I'm not really seeing this as the thing that's going to come up with a lot of corporations cooking like i'm gonna pick on that a little bit just because everyone already knows i just no one does anything about it <laughs> like you ask anyone nobody's like oh yeah the, all the corporations are on the up and up they're good well, we're good. well it, it also depends 
what do you mean by cooking the books? The, the only thing they could really do is like cheat on their taxes. But if there were no taxes, what, what are they going to cook the books for? Like, oh, we made we made a million dollars instead of. Oh, I I thought you meant like corporations, like how they basically just screw everyone. No, with, I think there's other ways. Laws on there, but there's other ways. But no, I think I think that's like that's probably the thing that drives me to liking this more than disliking this is the thing that they're saying it's it's more damaging towards organizations than individuals cuz i think the thing about individuals is probably what scared me more because yeah, that's, that's cuz it's personal yeah. yeah that's probably more where it's likely that like bad things can happen because i can't think of a situation where like an organization would get screwed by somebody on this if they were a good organization but you could probably see that happen to like an individual I think it more it's more likely that something bad would happen to an, an individual than an organization. But but like it's saying, this is probably going to have more of an effect on organizations and groups. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> well, anything that's decentralized, like they say that at the beginning about it being decentralized and everything like that, and it just, it kind of just throws rigid groups into chaos if you introduce a little bit of Incent because you introduce a little incentive to get rid of that, and it, it's not going to affect. Because with an individual, I don't really care what John does. I mean, this is different for me because I'm kind of just don't really care that much about what anybody does. But most individuals, I don't feel like are going to have their secrets being sold on here. And if they are, like Daniel was saying before, they're probably worth it. If someone's going to pay enough for it, then yeah, or whatever. <laughs> Your secrets aren't your own property, so... Actually, did it say anything about setting, like, a minimum? I thought it said it didn't. Because, like, you were saying if people think it's worth bidding on. Well, I mean, what if somebody puts up something, like, trying to screw somebody over and somebody pays, like, a cent for it? <laughs> but see, but, like, here's the thing with that, though, is, like... But if it, it, It's anonymous. I mean, you could find something out about some kid who lives in... New Jersey who uh, jacks off to gay porn and great, but it's not like I mean. But yeah, but like like it? John said, that's going to sell for a penny, and and why would I go through all the trouble to get a penny? Yeah. It, it's the and free market again. Like, oh, and and that's yeah. why you know you say it, you say it, you're worried about it damaging individuals, but usually individuals don't have a ton of money to to bid against like keeping their secrets, so. A secret against an individual is going to be worth a lot less money to a to an information seller because the highest the bid could go up is however much money that guy's worth, and and so is it really worth him finding the secret and then sharing the secret if he's only going to get one person's money worth max when he could go after group secrets that really are hurting people? Yeah, that's true. The only as you were saying that, I was thinking, well, some people might not care about the money, but then if that's the case, they're not going to use this anyway. Yeah, exactly. They'll already just so, be throwing information all over the internet, which people do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess this does only incentivize things that are worth money. And actually, it kind of, de it, it kind of, um, de de is decentivize a word? <laughs> Disincentivize? I don't know. <laughs> Disincentivize, whatever it is, it kind of, Disincentivize is kind of like petty, like doxing, kind of, maybe. <laughs> because if you can make money for it, it like, because people would maybe try to sell it and then not get enough money. Like, if you're just trying to shame people on, like, Reddit, maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking a little bit too highly of it. I don't know. Do you get what I'm, I'm getting I'm at? I'm not really following. <laughs> okay. You know, like, the doxing that happens, like, on Reddit, like, if someone, like, it, it's just, it's like a, not a prank, but, yeah, I I know. I, what you mean. Do you know what I even mean by I, doxing? I know what doxing Daniel? is. Okay. I've never seen it in a petty way. The only times I've seen it is when like somebody got hacked and they're like, "I want to dox whoever this hacker is" or whatever. I guess I don't mean petty in the sense of like judging the action. I mean petty is in like small like that. Right, but like I said, or I've like never people seen like that, trying so. to shame other people online or something like that. Maybe I'm just making up stuff about like online bullying. I don't know. 
Yeah, I, I like I said, I, I just the only ones I know of are big ones, but maybe it does happen on a smaller scale. I'm not really sure. No, I think I, I think I've seen stuff like that. I don't know how common it is, but I think it happens. Hey guys, I want to tell you about Wall of Coins, a brand new and very handy service for trading Bitcoin. The platform is designed to enable anyone to get their hands on some Bitcoin. Buyers are quickly connected to an authorized, trusted seller within the Wall of Coins network. Just set a dollar amount for your order, safely pay at a bank near you, and you instantly own more Bitcoin. Buyers don't even have to create an account, so anyone can have access to Bitcoin. Got some extra coin lying around? With Wall of Coins, you can sell it for cash, available immediately in your bank account. Visit wallofcoins.com right now to see just how easy it is. I want to ask, a, this is a pretty different topic, but just something I want to ask about. It says that, well, I'll just read this whole point again. Well, yeah, I mean, this is just one little thing that, that I don't really understand. It says, the same data cannot be auctioned off a second time on the slur marketplace. How, how can they do that? How can they not let the same data be sold twice because yeah that's the exact question i had so i don't <laughs> have an answer <laughs> like i i get like if if you have a a document and you know a text document and it, and it goes all the way down to zeros and ones i mean i get if it's the exact same document you can compare and say oh that's the same yeah whatever and i also get that even when it's encrypted, even when nobody is able to read the information, you're able to tell if it's the same or not based on the way it's encrypted. Th that happens all the time. There are tons of uses for technology like that. But what I don't get, like somebody could literally just change one word or they could add a word or whatever and the entire encryption changes. Now, honestly, I'm, I'm not going to explain it all, but that's that's a lot of what goes into Bitcoin and any kind of encryption is the way the way the message shows up when it is encrypted is if it's the same information, the encryption will be the same sometimes depending on how you do it. But like I said, that that's the thing. You could just add or remove one word and the entire data changes and nobody would know that it's the same data the only thing that i could think is if like if you had to add a description and if somebody was like wait we already sold that before we don't want to sell it again but that that doesn't seem very legit <laughs> like yeah i don't know <laughs> yeah i like i said i don't understand any way that they could possibly i was really stuttering there anyways <laughs> i don't i don't know any way that they could possibly stop it from getting put on there a second time but then i mean if it gets put on a second time who cares if someone's stupid enough to pay for it and not look back and see that somebody already bought the same thing yeah i don't know that's actually that's that's true yeah i mean at, at that point it seems like they're just like deciding that they don't it seems like an arbitrary choice for them because the whole point of this seems to be that they're providing this service. They're not making moral decisions for other people. By no means are they doing that. Like they're pretty much giving everybody an open playing field. You know. So I don't I don't know why they would uh draw the line there. To be honest, now that I think about this, this makes me start to wonder if this thing would even work at all because if I was trying to sell someone else's secrets and the bidders went back and forth and all of a sudden, you know, or, you know, the, the person whose secret it was, was able to pay a ton of money and keep it secret. I'm going to get all that money 
And then why can't I just start, whether I do it on the marketplace or not, why can't I just make it public anyway? I could even do that and, and charge, you know, half the price again. I, I could sell it, I could sell the secret to the person who owns the secret for a million dollars. And the public, you know, the group bidders could be like, oh, we really want this to be public, but it only gets up to 900,000, whatever. I make a million dollars off of it. And then I turn to the public and I say, hey, I'll give it to you for 500,000. So I end up making a million and a half and nobody, whoever, whever bid a million dollars to, to keep it secret is just screwed. Does that seem, does that seem like it could happen? Yeah. Well, that you're saying if they can't prevent the same data from being auctioned twice? Well, yes, but even even if they could, I, I could just sell it not on Slur. I could just tell people or something. Yeah. I mean, that's true. I, I guess it that still, though, the free market would help a little bit there because if the bidders know that the information is you know, might not be their own when they buy it. They might not be willing to bid as much. And and again, it's just the free market, whatever people are willing to bid and pay, as long as they know the rules, as long as they know that it could end up getting out anyway, even if they bought it, then that'll adjust how they bid. And just theoretically, you know, the, the free market could just work things out there. But I don't know, that seems tough. Well, I was going to say that they let people open disputes if they decide that the information isn't good, but I wonder if they can open any other disputes. That's that's one problem about this being anonymous, I guess, is that there's no way to rate people or like leave any kind of feedback. Right. I I know what you're saying, but I'm not sure that that's the case. I mean, it doesn't. Re it's anonymous in a way, but maybe you still have an identity on the marketplace. And that, that could also help with my issue that I just brought up. If there was a, w a way to rate users and keep track of users, yeah, that would help because then if somebody sold, sold the information again, or if they just made it public as soon as they sold it to somebody, then they would get a low rating and then they wouldn't be able to sell more information. So that I could definitely see that helping a lot. That's exactly what I was thinking, and that's why I was brought up the issue about maybe uh right I don't know I don't know if you if they have a provision for that they don't say anything about it on the page right, but they do mention arbitration, whether it's for that kind of dispute or whatever they do say that there are randomly selected arbiters and i I like that idea I think that's an example of of really the way things it, it's an example of kind of legitimate oversight when the arbiters are just people i mean randomly selected is a little sketchy but but it it still makes some sense and, and it's just the idea that the people who make the decisions the people who are the judges they don't really have any power they can't threaten you they can't kill you they just they weigh in if that's what it says here they weigh in on a dispute they get they give their decisions they say what they think and then the public can decide what to do who to believe stuff like that so so i do like this kind of decentralized oversight i guess yeah i like that too I mean, it's like you, you can't really guarantee that it's always going to be perfect, but I don't think there's any other better way that you could ever do something, do arbitration, really. Yeah, and the only thing that I would say, like I said, the randomness seems a little sketchy. Maybe if the arbiters could be rated themselves, and then, you know, you could pick high-rated judges or something. That would be helpful, and again, maybe they have something like that in mind, too. But so far, it just says randomly selected, which I think I had a conversation with you once, Tim, about how the actually it had to be even on the show. It might have been the Greeks or something. I heard somebody saying how one of the best periods of Greek government 
was when the the representatives were randomly chosen there was no voting yeah i remember this i think this is um actually from bitcoin in the beltway okay maybe yep i i do sort of remember that yeah i remember it was definitely somebody said it in like a speech or something yeah i, I want to say it was antonopolis but i don't know and and i remember that it was i think it was you and me john who went to it and we tried to explain it to tim and he's like that just doesn't make sense <laughs> oh yeah i do remember that <laughs> yeah Wh which it is true i mean if you're randomly selecting people you could get an idiot but at least they don't at least they're not incentivized to to just give away someone else's money in order to get more votes. So I think the thing that Tim didn't under or that Tim's problem with it was that like if people are picking them then it's not really random. Like who's to say that who, right. whoever's on the council to pick them doesn't just pick their brother's niece or something or whatever i don't know well i i honestly i honestly think it would have been pulling names out of a hat like i think it would yeah. have been a little more random but with with this i hope they're using you know random number generation and yeah. programs yeah. to do it so it, it'll be i don't like that's not going to be an issue with this hopefully if yeah. it is then they designed their service really <laughs> crappily so well and another <laughs> Uh, well, we we both have spoken for Tim now, and he hasn't he hasn't spoken yet. So you can correct <laughs> us if we're wrong. But another thing I think you didn't understand, or or not you didn't understand, but you just thought wasn't perfect was you're like, well, who who decides that it should be random? Whose choice was it to say, hey, let's pick leaders randomly? And that too is another. Yeah, you're right. That's not really perfect for somebody to make a decision like that and then impose it on everybody else but anyway are we are we explaining your misunderstandings correctly tim i think so <laughs> or, yeah. or is this another thing that you don't remember at all no i have a very vague memory of this i don't remember if it was from the big uh, i'm pretty probably. sure it is the more i think about it i'm pretty sure it is yeah uh is there anything else yeah i have something yeah go for it I wanted to talk about the part where they say crowd bidders pull their funds into a single bid, and uh, if they win, they release the keys to the marketplace and it becomes completely public. That, I think, is maybe my favorite thing about this whole thing. And th there are a lot of reasons for that. Well, for one, they talk about uh, source code and stuff like that. And I mean, I, I've talked about it on other podcasts before that I'm kind of into open source and creative commons or, or things like that. Any kind of free right license and like copyleft and stuff like that. So that's, I guess that's just a personal thing for me, but I think way more importantly, like, as I think about it, yeah, that it actually has like a, a really huge implication because how do I want to explain this? I'm trying to word this in a way that sounds eloquent or something, which I'm <laughs> sure I'm just going to completely fail at. I I guess I could compare this maybe to like arguments that like people use for Marxism or whatever, which is going to probably put me in a horrible light. <laughs> and just for future reference, I'm not in any way a, a Marxist, <laughs> which I hope you know that if you've listened to the <laughs> podcast before, but with with governments and stuff like that, or maybe maybe not even Marxism. I can talk about. I could just use like 1984 for an example. Like the the way that they maintain power is keeping keeping the people from realizing that if they were able to unite together, they could overthrow the power. So so it's like people and and this crowdfunding thing. I guess I should explain in what context I'm thinking about this corporations, I think are like a huge thing that could be fit, maybe made a lot better by a service like this because, because they get so huge and they get so much money and stuff as they, as they grow bigger, they can screw people and take advantage of people. Right. And it's the same kind of thing. If people were able to join together, they'd be able to fight back against stuff like that but yeah. because they're separated 
These corporations can continue to do stuff that nobody wants them to do. They just think they can't do anything about it. So I guess going back to my blackmail example, it the thing that worried me about it is like if somebody actually if somebody's cooking the books and somebody tries to put that out there and the corporation ends up paying them. Well, I mean, I guess if they really want to put it out there, they would do it for free. But I guess even if somebody's doing it for the wrong reasons, it can still have a good outcome because the fact that the corporation has all this money to blow on keeping whatever right. they want to keep secret, secret, they don't, with something like this, they don't have the power to just overrule everyone because now people can come together and yeah, I guess it just shows people that if they come together, they can, you know, stick a middle finger to people <laughs> No, that they didn't they didn't think they could before. Yeah, that's true. And even like you could, you know, you could argue like, oh, somebody's just going to have a ton of money and their their secrets are never going to get out and they're just going to screw people, but exactly what you said, that that would help when the public can can collectively fight against that. But I also think that competing corporations are also going to bid on stuff like this. Because they're competitors and they want to screw over their competitors. So, so the public, you know, you, you, could, you could imagine the public is just this little group of people trying to fend for themselves. But, but they're not necessarily on their own because other huge corporations would also have reasons to, to help out the public and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. I mean, I think this is just the value of crowdfunding in general. Right. It it like it lets people do things that they want to do. I guess it just facilitates people doing things that they want to get done that they wouldn't be able to get done by themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's And there's not really a, a mechanism for people to be that united outside of something like this. I think that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and and this will I mean this will be just fascinating to see if anything comes of it that that's the thing in 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 the bitcoin space you know every day there's people coming out with a new idea new software new altcoins that have all these amazing features and maybe they're good maybe they're not but a lot of them just they have a fancy website and maybe a few users but they never really become mainstream and so that's that's i, I i'm just saying i don't know as amazing as this sounds, at the moment, it's just hard to see it taking off just because it's a little thing out in the middle of the internet. But that's what we'll keep an eye on and we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. I have kind of like a running joke with some people about startups, <laughs> how everybody's like <laughs> talking about their new startup. I mean, I guess it's the same thing as the dot com bubble. Right. But but even in the dot com bubble, you're gonna get you're gonna get Googles and Amazons. So Yeah, exactly. It's there's no real way of knowing what's gonna stick. I also wanna say before we wrap up, this was an interesting episode because I I mentioned this to Tim earlier, but he didn't he didn't look at this. Uh, I mean, unless he di unless he did send it to me earlier and forgot. He didn't look at this until five minutes before the show, and neither did John. But I think it was also interesting that we kind of unfolded everything. You know, we went back and forth. We talked about it and changed our minds and tried to understand things. I thought that was pretty interesting to to unfold this in real time or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I changed my mind five or six times. <laughs> yeah, we kind of went all over the place. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll probably change our minds again tomorrow and, and we'll talk about this next time a, a decentralized secret marketplace shows up. But, you know, there's, there's value in, in going off the cuff. <laughs> Thanks for listening to episode 61. All of the music in today's show was from John Stewart. Remember to check out this week's show notes at youme and btc.com and leave us a comment. 
We'll see you next Thursday.